Hey, Jason Murphy, Head Nerd for Enable. I know it's been a bit. Uh, we have an action-packed uh, 24.6 release. Check this out. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, we've got a ton of stuff packed into 24.6. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible. Um, so with that, let's focus on what is in the release. Okay, now we have what is called audit export. If you have a SIM, um, or if you have anything that is now going to capture uh, syslog data, you can now ship logs from N Central directly into um, your SIM of choice or uh, your log manager. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on administration, audit export. You do need to be signed in as product admin for this. So if you're on-prem, you have to log in as um, uh, um, product admin. And then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on audit export, and then you're going to configure um, the exporting of these logs. Again, you're going to send it to a syslogger or maybe a SIM of your choice. So you're gonna give it the host name or the IP address. You're going to give it the port, and I believe the port is, oh, the default port is typically uh, 514. You're going to enable TLS, and then you're going to copy and paste in the TLS certificate. Okay, so that's what we have for audit exports. Okay, so now I want to show you something cool that we have added, um, is now we have a column called Agent Last Check-In. So what we're going to do is click that last check-in, and now you could quickly see the last time this was che has checked in to N Central. Um, again, giving you a way to see uh, when agents may have failed, how long ago, those kinds of things. Equally, what we're going to do is we're going to come down to configuration. We're going to click on asset discovery, and we're going to come into discovered assets. In here, what we're going to do is now I can show ignore devices, but importantly, I'm going to now be able to turn on things like WMI, registry, NetBIOS, SNMP, admin share, SSH, and agent version. So from here, and that's a lot of columns we have just added, but in here, what you're gonna be able to do is see what may be problematic during the discovery. Why is it in the imported uh, discovered assets? Well, maybe we're not able to see WMI WMI on the uh, Windows endpoint. Maybe we're not able to query SNMP from one of the network devices. So again, again this is going to be able to provide you, uh, our partner, a, a clear visibility as to where um, you know problems may lie during a discovery. Okay, so with this particular release in 24.6, we now have multiple monitor support. Now, I've already logged in to head nerd number two for N Central, uh, Paul Kelly. We're going to use his particular laptop. So I'm going to pull that up here now. And as you can see to the right-hand side, under this little monitor, you can see number two. What we can now do is fly out one of those multiple monitors so that we can obviously do our troubleshooting. So I'm going to launch that. That's going to now open up a new window. And then you can see here, if I just reduce the size a little bit, you can see that we now have another monitor where we can do troubleshooting on the other screen if we needed to. Okay, so that is now multiple monitor support with take control. We have another hidden gem here under chat. You will see that there is a now a new chat column. We're going to click into chat and we're going to request a chat session with the end user on the other side. Now this is just a server, so I'm going to pretend to do all of that on my side here. And then I'm going to click yes, where I can now facilitate a chat with the end user. Hi, Jason, can I help you today? There's even emojis, okay? So uh, some awesome stuff here where you can now chat with your end user going back and forth. Um, an awesome piece, obviously, when you're troubleshooting with end users or working with customers, you don't always want to hop into remote control um, and maybe interrupt them. A simple, quick chat uh, might do the trick. Okay, so obviously adding chat into end central. Now, you may thought I was done with take control. Okay, I'm not. Okay, because there is one more thing that we have included in 
uh, take control is that we have added in what is called the support toolkit. If I click on the support toolkit, uh, that will fly out. Now, uh, if it does what it just did on my screen, you can actually grab it here at the bottom, move it around and pull it down. Um, from here, what we can do is now go into a UNC path where all of your automation, your amps, and all of your PowerShell scripts, VBS, whatever it may be, um, if we go to that repository locally within your within your environment, what you're going to be able to, like your workstation, maybe a SharePoint, what have you, you're going to be able to now find all of your scripts. And then from there, what you're going to be able to do is now choose that, include any command line arguments, like if I was pushing software and I would put silent, well, I wouldn't even have to do that because I can actually just run silently. Um, and then what you're going to see here is that it's going to run and then run that PowerShell natively through Take Control. And we're going to be able to get that software list. Again, that is going to be a really great way to be able to utilize the automations that you have locally to be able to uh, run against your customer devices. Okay, so let's hop into device manager for Apple using or powered by Apple Business Manager. We're going to select this device because what we're going to do is we're going to tell this device to enable File Vault. Um, so effectively, like BitLocker for Windows, we're going to uh, ensure that there is disk encryption on this device. We're going to enable File Vault. And now that I have done that, I can now go into that device and quickly see that File Vault is now enabled. Okay, so quickly you're going to be able to turn this on any of your devices that you are managing through uh, uh, Device Manager for Apple. Now I know we've added a bunch of cool stuff into this particular release for 24.6. Um, one thing I will tell you is that something else is coming very, very shortly that I definitely wanted to highlight within this release. Now it will go into private preview with some partners in December. And then I believe on January 2nd, this will be available, but this is the enable developer portal. Effectively anyone, whether you're a partner or maybe you're a third party. Um, I mentioned uh, ScalePad on this particular uh, video earlier. Um, you're going to be able to come in here and use this particular developer portal to be able to interact with our APIs. You will see Take Control and in Central Cove is just around the corner. So I'm going to be able to come in here. I'm going to say something like, can you write me a Python script that pulls all devices from and central pardon any typos and i am it's now thinking so we now have a developer portal immersed in ai this is from uh what is called readme.io um, feel free to check it uh, check them out um, bunch of security standards um, and everything else you're going to be able to request this uh, particular scripting through the uh, developer portal, um, ton of information behind it, um, code examples, and you will probably at some point see the enable cookbook, uh, which I contribute to and have been for the last four two, four years, along with Mark Andre and Paul and some of the other head nerds, is that, that that particular cookbook will move into here as recipes. Okay, so more on the enable developer portal very soon. Okay, so let's end with APIs. Usually I start with APIs, but we're gonna end with APIs only because there are some hidden gems within here. What I do want to show you here is that we do have maintenance windows have been added uh, as API endpoints. We're going to be able to post, delete, and get maintenance windows directly from your devices. So we can now tell your devices how to configure maintenance windows. One additional thing that we have added, if you come into a device and you go into devices, and I'll just show you what the JSON looks like, is that you now have last app clients check-in time. Okay, so that will now give you a date. You can now pull that information, filter on it, uh, figure out if something is erroneous or old or what have you, and obviously uh, make intelligent decisions based on that information. Okay, so that is some stuff right there, along with, and I'm excited to announce that if you do have a third party tool whereby you want to push warranty information into NCentral, 
um, like for example, my good friends at ScalePad, um, you're going to be able to come in here under, or are you here, Canvas Windows, da, 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 I forget where I put it. There it is, under, it was right under devices. Okay, so it's here under devices, and then you will see where you can get, put, and patch um, uh, warranty information directly into N Central. And again, this will work on all Windows devices and Apple devices. Those are the, the two I know my good friend uh, Jason, not myself, but another Jason uh, has tested uh, with us. Um, and we can definitely update those uh, Windows and uh, Apple devices uh, with warranty information. Okay, so that's it for me. My name is Jason Murphy, 24.6. Give it a thumbs up. Thanks again.